Hey everybody, Matthew Tactical Comms, and uh, hadn't posted a lot this week. It's been kind of busy at work, but I wanted to follow up and continue on from last week's video. And one of the questions I keep getting more and more and more is, how do I get started? Last week I told you about ham radio, uh, studying for your technician class license. And then some of you have told me that you've already ordered a radio and what are some things that you can do to start with? So I decided what I would do is I would start out, um, I built me a whole kit from uh, scratch and actually reached out to my friend over at Dietrich over at Skinny Matic and uh, was able to pick up uh, this nifty little bag from him. I had right around 30 bucks shipped, but uh, it's a really cool feature, that some features that it has. Uh, it's got plenty of pockets in it, plenty of compartments. And uh, so what I did was I started out, and I'm going to show you the kit that I built uh, that you can build for yourself. And uh, right, what I did was I bought, I went a little bit above and beyond, but I bought the Bofang uh, UV5X3, which has 220. I'm a big 220 fan. Uh, there's not a lot of activity on it. And it comes from the factory with two antennas. It comes with one that's a, a dual band uh, VHF or two meter and 440. And then you've got a 220 stock antenna. This is what I think about the stock antenna. Whenever you buy a radio, no matter what the brand is, and it comes with uh, a factory antenna, chunk it. I do that on my public safety radios. Um, they're they're mediocre at best. And so uh, I picked up this Nagoya uh, NA320A antenna, which is a tri-band. Uh, it performs significantly better on there. That's one of the easiest things you can do with a handheld radio is get you an improved antenna. Notice it's, slight, it's a good bit longer than the factory antennas. Um, they're okay if you're just going to be talking around, whatever, but I don't like that. So we'll put my antenna back over here to the side. So that's about all I got in that pocket. Now in this pocket, I've got some spare batteries. I've got uh, a spare high capacity battery for the Bofang. And, and let me just put this in here. To my public safety friends, you know how I feel about these radios on the public safety ground. They don't have any business being there. But for amateur radio, for building a little kit to get started, it's, it's a, good, a good fit. And they're cheap. So we've got our spare battery here. Um, makes it a little bit longer, but it's a higher capacity battery and uh, works well. Uh, another neat feature that I've got, and I've got spare batteries in here, is I've got, uh, this is called a clamshell. Uh, if you're not familiar with a clamshell, clamshell allows you to take a battery such as this and make it a, use AA batteries for it. Now the trick is the Bofang radio uh, does not like six batteries in here. So it, it'll allow the radio power on, but it won't transmit. So this battery bought from Bofang Tech ships with this dummy pass-through battery. You've got to use it or it don't, it, it's not going to help you at all. Um, why would we even want to try something like this? Um, the biggest reason that we want to use a, radio, a, a battery case like this is it's easy to get AA batteries. You may not have good access to recharging batteries uh, in the field. So I like that. Uh, I also have a battery pack here. Uh, it's about 21,000 milliamp hours. Uh, it'll charge my phone. It'll also charge using the five volt uh, battery pack. I've had this for a while. But you can pick these up. Uh, Anchor makes some good ones. There's several of them. Notice that it's got uh, some USB ports on it, things like that. Um, you can pick up uh, five volt uh, battery chargers for the, the Bofang batteries, Bofang, however you say it. Um, I've also got uh, the 110 charger in here just because I like keeping everything together. Uh, and this is something that's really, really cool. Uh, right in the rain, right in the rain notepad. Uh, very few things that you can't, I mean, we, think, we tend to think of communications and uh, technology, but you can't beat writing it down and sending a runner uh, for notes and things like that. And I'm not going to go into details with you. I've already talked about improving your antenna, uh, but I've also, I'm building these for uh, my public safety friends. You'll see a lot of places that um, a, a lot of groups will advertise buying the roll-up J-Pole. Those are good antennas. Uh, I'm not a fan of the roll-up J-Pole. When I started experimenting with the jungle antenna, uh, the jungle antenna performed much better in my experiences than the roll-up J-Pole. So that's what I choose. This will be another video for another day. But if you haven't, if you don't believe me, I'm not making it up. It's not like the sky hook or the hose stretcher. It really is an antenna. Uh, was used a lot during the Vietnam War. So there you have it. That's a little quick 
two meter 440, uh, and in my case, 220 go kit with uh, a cheap Bofang radio to get you started. Now that just gets you started with the technology. Now, in our next move, our next video, I'm gonna to try to talk to you a little bit about how to build a comms plan. What do you need? Where can you talk on? Where can you not? I gotta put this in here. If you're not sure, if you're not licensed, don't program channels or frequencies and then try to transmit on. Uh, we need to be good stewards and good neighbors. And you know, I hear people all the time, oh, in case of emergency, and the emergency is when we want to be the smartest. So we'll talk about some disaster scenarios and some channels in our next video. Uh, until next time, uh, Matthew with Tactical Comms. See you next trip.